Hello and welcome to the instruction on inequalities where we take something that used to look like 3x plus 4 equals 11 and change it and say okay what if it's 3x plus 4 is greater than 11. Well what did we do here? Well we subtracted 4 so we get 3x equals 7 and divided by 3 we get x equals 7 thirds. Over here same exact process and so that's going to be the first thing we have the same process all of the power that we experienced in solving equations we're going to use over here subtract 4 we get 3x is greater than 7 and then x is greater than 7 thirds all right so this has exactly one answer this one has a billion answers you could have x equals 12 or 19 or 38.6 any number that is bigger than 7 thirds so we run into a little bit of an issue we can't write them all down and so we graph them that's why we graph them is because we can't write them all down we put a little thing here you will not need a particularly detailed graph say tell me where 0 is and tell me where the important number is 7 thirds now notice that when we are coloring this in x is greater than or equal to 7 thirds we're coloring in all of these numbers up here and how close do we get down here well you can't really tell but we don't want 7 thirds because 7 thirds is not one of the answers so we put an open circle there that says 7 thirds is not part of it so here the official way of writing this is the set of all x's such that they meet this criteria and this blue stuff around here just makes it look really nice for the math guys that's good so that's called set notation and that's yeah the set of all x's such that they meet that criteria those are the solutions this is a graph and you'll notice that if we put this one together with this one in other words put a little equal sign here we actually have two problems that are going on that we can now ha say hey 7 thirds is indeed one of our answers so that would fill in this dot here all right so let's go through that there's another way of graphing these with different symbols and it would be that if it's an open circle that's the same as having a parenthesis right here pointing the direction that you're going and if it's equal to complete circle it would be one that looks like this it is a bracket pointing the way that you go this allows for one more way of writing an answer and it is called interval notation you'll notice the answer here is we are taking the interval from 7 thirds up to infinity so this open or when we did it with the open circle would look like this 7 thirds up to infinity there's that symbol there and say it starts with that same symbol that means open circle and of course you can never quite hit infinity so interval notation looking like the red one when I put this equal sign up here where it includes seven thirds would look like this I don't think it will be necessary on the answers in your homework particularly in this class that you write it in interval notation but when you hit college algebra pre-calculus they will often have interval notation so this is just a way of taking the graph and putting into something that you can type let's try a problem over here okay here we have one negative 2x plus 4 is bigger than 12 we do the exact same process as what we did before subtract 4 you get negative 2x is bigger than 8 and then we divide by a negative 2 now we have to stop right now because this is where the inequalities have an unusual thing happen to them we notice that when we go back and do something simple like 5 is bigger than 2 if we add something to both sides like 3 we get 8 is bigger than 5 yeah if we times by 3 we get 24 is bigger than 15 now notice what happens if we make both of these negative so a negative 24 and a negative 15 what happens there which one is actually bigger and you're right this goes the other way we need to see that on a number line yeah if you have 0 right here here's 15 and here's 24 when you flip them over negative what used to be bigger is now smaller let's label these 15 and 24 the negative 24 is now smaller in real world 
talk. If somebody had $15 and $24, this guy's richer. But if you turn their money to debt, made them both negative, it actually switches the direction, which is what negatives do. This guy that's only in debt $15 is now the richer one. So if you ever multiply or divide by a negative number, you must switch the sign. Let's write that up here, except for multiplication or division by a negative, by a negative, not to a negative number. Then you switch direction. That's crucial, switch direction. So on this guy right here, this is a negative 4, but you'll notice that this guy switched direction. So the graph, let's put this graph on here, there is 0 and negative 4. We are going to be less than negative 4, so it will go this way. Okay, the new symbol we have here is a parenthesis, a parenthesis with an open circle because we don't include 4. So this is set notation. This is a graph, and the interval notation, we would go all the way up from negative infinity to negative 4 and not quite hit it. So this is set, this is a graph, and I think your instructions in your textbook may only have you graph it, or may just have you write that answer there, or interval notation. So we just need to make sure you have seen this, but I don't think it'll be necessary for you in your uh, course. Great, that should summarize what you're going to do with inequalities. Now we're going to move on and talk about compound inequalities. Compound inequalities are kind of cool. You can put two things together with an and or an or. So let's write a couple of these up here, like x is bigger than 5 and x is less than 8. Let's see what this does when you put this in here. x is bigger than 5. OK, so we can graph that puppy. You have 0, here's 5, and here's 8, good. And bigger than 5 looks like this. And less than 8 looks like this. And goes on forever down there. Well, now comes the thing you need to focus on and think about. What does that mean, and? It means at the same time. Well, shoot, this is starting to get a little ugly. Let's go backwards just a little bit undo those and uh, illustrate what happens because you're also going to see some that look like this x is greater than 5 or x is less than 8 and you're going to be expected with those exact same things to distinguish between how they are compounded and what these and and or mean. Let's look at for just a minute a small little map of a town. I'm going to do uh, here's a road that looks like I don't know second north Here's another road, and this looks like sec, uh, third north, something like that. And here's one that comes through second east. Let's label that second. I think colors are best way to explain this. If I look at these two roads and I say, okay, where is second north and third north? Well, geez, they never cross, so there isn't a second north and third north. Now, you could say, where's second north and second east? And you're like, hey, there's the intersection right here. So the word and means intersection. When something is red and the other thing it's intersecting with is blue, then red and blue make purple. So let's graph this x is greater than 5 in red. And let's graph the x less than 8 in blue. And now let's do where the purple is. Ta-da! There's the purple right there. And we can write that as a compound inequality. x is less than 8 and bigger than 5 at the exact same time. That's our, that's our solution, and we've written those together as a compound inequality. Now, if I were to ask you a different question with the word or, say, hey, would you meet me on either 2nd north or 2nd east? You're like, well, that wasn't very specific. Right, because the places that I have just described are anywhere on either one of them. So I color everything, whether it's on this one or that one. In fact, you could do it with things that are completely disjoint, that never connect. You could say, could you meet me on 2nd North or 3rd North or 2nd East? And, well, nobody would say that because that's so not descriptive, but it would encompass everything. Let's see what that looks like on a number line. So even if we did this, 
um, 0, 5, 8. Same exact setup. Let's look and see what OR does. Here's the red, and the red goes up clear to infinity. The blue comes right down here. Now notice with the OR statement, give me numbers that are either bigger than 5 or greater than 8. That means they're colored either red or blue. We're not just looking for the purple ones. We're looking for anything that's colored. And oh my goodness, every number is. This number fits the criteria because it is less than 8. Numbers up here fit the criteria because they're bigger than 5. So this solution is everything all real numbers. So when you put these together, some unusual things could happen. You could restrict it tightly, or you could expand it to hit everything. Let's see a couple more examples. All right, here we go. We have x greater than 5 and x less than or equal to negative 3. And I think this is great. Our end answer is going to be wherever the red and blue connect, because it's red and blue. So we are actually looking for the purple here. So let's do that. x is greater than 5, so we've got open circle or a parenthesis to come up here this direction. And x is less than or equal to negative 3, so that would be a closed dot or a bracket as a symbol to, that we actually include that. And where's the purple? There is no purple. This has no solution. Some of you have seen the empty set symbol, and you can put that as well. But there is no solution. There is no number that is bigger than 5 and less than or equal to negative 3 at the same time. Let's see what an or does to that exact same statement over here. We have x bigger than 5, or x is less than or equal to negative 3. Uh, but we're not looking for purple. We're looking for anything that is colored either red or blue. So let's graph it and see what it looks like. So here's the open circle. It can be represented with a parenthesis. Headed that way, good. X is less than or equal to negative 3, so that's a closed dot, and it goes this way. Good deal. And so we want all the numbers that are colored either one of them. So our solution looks like this. This is where set notation is very valuable. X is greater than 5, or X is less than or equal to negative 3. You just can't simplify it anymore like we did with the, the and there. These are shooting off. And they don't overlap, so there's no way to simplify that even more. I'm going to write this in interval notation, even though your textbook may not actually require it. But so you can see, this is from negative infinity up to negative 3. And it has open there, because you can't hit that, and closes there, just like that symbol up on the graph. And then this is a union symbol. And it goes from 5 up to infinity. There you have it. And that guy right there is an interval notation representation of this, which is representing that graph right there. OK, that should help you with compound inequalities.